Welcome back. Welcome back. We Ray Diamond K in here, of course. The Diamond K Show on Fire TV. Radio on Fire. A lot of things to uh, get into. A lot of things that uh, we need to dissect here. And, of course, uh, 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 another day, another uh, <laughs> controversy, if you want to say that. Uh, it is election season, and everything goes down election season. That's what happens. So reports emerged that Donald Trump had spoken to so-called independent presidential candidate RFK Jr., Robert F. Kennedy Jr. So it was only natural that folks wondered what were they talking about in this secret conversation uh, the two are supposed to be running opposed, are supposed to be both running for the president uh, a slot. But uh, as it turns out, the public received an unex- unexpected peak, a, a unexpected uh, listen behind the curtain to a conversation that took place a day after the uh, assassination attempt on Trump and uh, RFK apologized this morning after his son, Robert F. Kennedy, the third posted a video on accident has now been deleted, but it showed a call between his father and Trump and uh, Bobby Kennedy, the third wrote in a post that the call took place on Sunday, the day after the assassination attempt on Trump. In the video, Trump can be heard talking about uh, children's you know, vaccines and uh, the gunshot that he experienced at the Pennsylvania rally on Saturday. So the candidate son took down the clip. He posted on social media, but not before it was, of course, captured and republished and all of that good stuff so we were able to find out a lot of things that we already knew what do we already know we knew that what we suspected that there was some colluding going on between trump and rfk jr and during the call Trump tries to to court RFK Jr. support, tries to get him to drop out of the race, tries to get him to come on over to the to the Trump side and endorse him. Mentioned on the call that uh, Biden was nice to him. And uh, one thing that was very Trump like, he said that the bullet was like the world's largest mosquito. Right. Oh yeah, y'all, y'all acting like he was really, really hurt. He says that the uh, the, the bullet was like a a mosquito. Oh yeah, he, he's really he really was hurt. There's no reason for him to be wearing that dumb bandage then if it was like a mosquito, right? Anyway, uh, part of what makes the video notable was the suggestion that Trump and Kennedy are, or at least should be on the same page politically. Of course, Trump doesn't care anything about policy. He just wants to win. I would love for you to do something, Trump can be heard saying. And I think it'll be so good for you and so big for you, and we're going to win. I mean, he's he's like a, a, a talent agent or, or a car salesman. Kennedy, uh, Kenny, Kennedy, uh, agreed, replying, yeah, like, like he's eating it up, right? Uh, and so Kennedy has cameras on him. And he's filming, I mean, he's filming a documentary. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, also notable is the uh, uh, anti vaccine rhetoric that Trump said. He says, uh, when you feed a baby, Bobby, a vaccination that is like 38 different vaccines and it looks like it's meant for a horse. 
not a, you know, 10 pound or 20 pound baby. Trump said he continued. And then you see the baby all of a sudden starting to change radically. I've seen it too many times. And then you hear that it doesn't have an impact, right? But you and I talked about that a long time ago. So it was interesting. I mean, he, he's feeding the ego of RFK. Because, you know, RFK is, is big on, you know, the, the vaccine. He's a, he's a vaccine skeptic, right? And uh, in this reference to vaccines and... uh and uh, the such Trump, who, if you remember, his administration was was bringing on the COVID vaccine, right? So how do you really feel about vaccine? I mean, you know, it's uh, Trump's all over the place. Uh, anyway, Trump went on to tell RFK, like I said, who is known for his anti-vaccine rhetoric. I agree with you, man. Something's wrong with that whole system. Now. I guess the uh, uh, best case scenario that uh, Trump knew what he was saying was nonsense, but he made uh, comments anyway in hopes of uh, getting someone whose endorsement he wants. You know, that's why he was saying that. I I guess that is the best case scenario. Now, from a public health perspective, the worst case scenario is that Trump actually believes what he said. Um, and, uh, echoing, you know, earlier comments, uh, and his perspective, second term administration would govern with such beliefs in mind. So that would be interesting. So if, if Trump could get reelected or does get reelected, can you could imagine based on what he's saying, him putting RFK you know, in in control of vaccines or something like that, uh, it would really be uh, not good for the people. Not good for the people. So the fact that Kennedy and Trump, or, or, or the fact that RFK had Trump on speaker has led to speculation that the independent candidate wanted their conversation to be recorded because listening to the recording the video he doesn't rfk doesn't say too much he's just kind of like standing there he's nodding he says yeah once or twice uh but it it feels like i don't know like a setup almost like you know he he had him put the stuff out there because he rfk is not saying anything you know incriminating and not that trump said anything incriminating per se uh but it is definitely uh noteworthy that kennedy said he's afraid to keep cell phones by his head, you know, because that's that's a whole nother conspiracy uh, that he has. Very interesting. RFK, uh, the vaccine skeptic. His his side leaks this phone call between Trump and RFK. They are definitely colluding. They're definitely colluding. They're trying to beat Biden. Uh, telling. Him, we will win. RFK responding, yeah. RFK is a spoiler candidate trying to help Donald Trump. And his son, all you know, RFK the third, all all part of this whole uh spectacle. Oh, and, and so we gotta make sure that folks know this. And uh, they've deleted the video. He took it down. But like I said, it it is out there. And uh, it is, I don't know. It's one of those things. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all, actually. Uh, I don't put anything past RFK. uh, And I definitely don't put anything past uh, Donald Trump. Let me know your thoughts, scores in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at The Diamond K Show. Uh, do this, take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more of the show. Well, 
Welcome back, your man Diamond K in here. Now, when they talk about this two-tier justice system, you've heard folks talk about this. Oh, it's a two-tier justice system. And uh, that is true because you have the haves and the have-nots. You have folks that are, uh, you know, have money, have uh, fame and power, and they get treated differently from everybody else. What am I talking about? Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey convicted on all counts, 16 counts in this trial that featured tales of bribes and gold and a car. Uh, he has uh, been convicted. The jury, uh, it, it, it doesn't look good for him. All right, so so he's getting found guilty of 16 charges over this nine-week trial. And they did not even take him into custody. They did not take him into custody. Uh, and, and, and the other thing, that, and we, we've learned this with Trump and his uh, convictions, he can still serve office. Now, the Democrats, of course, are trying to get him to step down. But Menendez has been brazen. He has been, uh, you know, just bucking the, the Democratic system. He uh, switched to an independent because he didn't like he didn't like how they was not rocking with him because you know he was on trial. So he's on trial, and they're trying to get him to step down. You know, Democrats, the sign of trouble. They're like, oh, step down. Oh, no, please don't do it. You know, uh, and uh, Menendez hanging in there saying that uh he's innocent he he doesn't you know who doesn't keep gold bars around the house what do you mean that uh in cuba uh things were hectic so i had to keep cash and so some of this cash is not only my cash it's my wife's cash and uh he's trying everything uh and he did not plead out he went to trial and you know how the government is when they have a case and they had a strong case against uh senator menendez so when you have a strong case you know, the government's feeling good and they don't want to go to trial. They want you to plead out. Menendez did not plead out. So they were forced to do this nine week trial, which got the result that they thought they were going to get. And it ends up with him being convicted of accepting bribes of cash, gold, a uh, luxury car from three New Jersey businessmen. And uh, like I said, the, the trial went nine weeks. Prosecutors said that the New Jersey Democrat. Oh, oh, I thought they only tried Republicans. No, this is a Democrat. This New, New Jersey Democrat, uh, according to the government, abused the power of his office to protect allies from criminal investigations and enrich associates, including his wife, through acts that included meeting with Egyptian intelligence officials and helping that country access millions of dollars in U.S. military aid. Uh, some of the charge, one of the charge, two of the charges actually uh, named him as a, a foreign agent and uh, also uh, obstructing justice in the investigation. Oh, it just, it's just messy for him. Uh, so he's going to be sentenced in October. He claims he's not stepping down. Uh, of course, his attorney says that they are going to appeal the process. And he says that there's uh, a whole lot of uh, appellate uh, uh, options here. And, you know, he, he's talking uh, still cold cash trash. And uh, his wife is still facing uh, her own court case. So that is, uh, that is interesting. Of course, like I said, two tier justice system because the average defendant wouldn't be able to go home after these charges. After these convictions. As I said, it was 16, 16, uh, charges. He found guilty on all charges and they let him go home. It's so interesting, right? They let him go home. Uh, so who, who knows? So he, bare minimum, he's going to be facing, uh, several years in jail, in, in federal, uh, jail. 
So we're going to continue to follow that, of course. Uh, you would need to get in touch with me, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. Of course, you can advertise your product, service, or event with On Fire TV. Sponsorships can include on air mentions, uh, social media posts, uh, digital commercials with links uh, leading to your products. Uh, so definitely uh, visit onfire tv.com slash advertise for more info on that. You can support the Diamond K show and on fire TV via paypal.me slash radio on fire and on cash app I am dollar sign the diamond K show you can also become a member get exclusive content uh, and you can uh, get that at on fire dash tv.com slash join do this a quick break and then we will be back with more of the show uh, as we continue Visit onfiretv.com for live top stories, breaking news, and original shows. Are back. And um, a Dallas police officer has been placed on leave over alleged social media posts about uh, Donald Trump's assassination attempt. And, you know, here's the thing. Folks. Republicans can say whatever they want about folks and and there's not going to be any consequences, right? But anybody else that says something about them, uh it is you know unaccepted for some reason. Trump can say whatever he wants. He, he talks so crazy about Nancy Pelosi's uh husband's attack and and many others and his minions did the same thing. Uh, folks that are in office did the same thing. And uh, no repercussions whatsoever. But this police officer has been put on leave. He is a Dallas police officer. And he has been put on leave because of comments that he made on social media. So they they, they are taking this serious. So this, this officer is on administrative leave. He wrote, aim better on social media over the weekend after the assassination attempt of Donald Trump. Uh, and uh, Sergeant uh, Martinez, 37 years old, published the two-word post on Saturday after the shooting. And uh, now he is, <laughs> I, I just, I, I'm shocked at this, but but not really, not really. Okay, and uh, the thing is, is that, I'll say that an officer, you know, you want to hold them to a certain standard, but uh, now all of a sudden we start holding officers to to another standard. <laughs> now, this now all of a sudden this happens. Uh, but normally officers can do whatever they want to do. Uh, but this officer uh, placed on leave because he posted aim better, and of course we know what he is referring to. And of course, Republicans are uh, shocked and appalled. Republicans are clutching their pearls. Uh, so yes, an assassination attempt, and, and we're going to be talking about that, uh, of course, more uh, as things come out. Uh, but the Dallas police sergeant placed on administrative leave after posting aim better over the weekend. So the uh, uh, DPD, Dallas Police Department, issued a news release stating that they received an internal complaint, right? Uh, I thought that they backed the blue. So somebody that works, another police officer, right? Talk about backing the blue. Another police officer reported and filed an internal complaint on Saturday regarding Sergeant Martinez alleged comment on a social media platform. And the post was believed to have been related to the shooting of uh, or the shooting at Donald Trump's campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. So the incident that uh, wounded Trump's ear, well, he's, he's wearing this bandage. Of course, his uh, uh, wacky doctor says that part of his ear is missing, but don't worry, it'll grow back. <laughs> Ears grow back? What? So <laughs> that tells you that Donald Trump's gonna be wearing his bandage till November. Okay, just 
He's going to probably be wearing his bandage till November because his ear is missing. Part of the ear is missing off. They're going to say it grew back in four months. That's that's what's going to happen. And the Trump supporters are going to eat it up, right? He's going to say, I'm missing part of my ear. I need you to send me money. Send me money. Send MAGA money so I can grow a MAGA ear back. Uh, you know, and if y'all do it, then that's, I mean, that's on y'all. Right? But politics is a game of addition. It's a game of addition, meaning you're, you're supposed to try to bring more people to your cause. So folks talk about Trump's shooting and, oh, this guarantees that he's going to win. No, it's not. No, it doesn't. They say that he's like Teddy Roosevelt. No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. So Teddy Roosevelt in, in uh, uh, 1912, he's he's running for re-election after he said he wasn't going to run, right? So uh, we'll, we'll take a quick trip. Teddy Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, Roosevelt, was the vice president for William McKinley. William McKinley, 1901, was assassinated. Theodore Roosevelt became the president after the assassination. So he finishes out McKinley's term, runs for his own term in office, boom. And then he he runs, opens his mouth, right? Opens his big mouth and says, I'm not going to run anymore. I'm not going to seek, seek election anymore. So William Howard Taft comes in. This was his hand-picked guy, and he becomes the president. So Roosevelt didn't like anything that he did. And he said, oh, no, I got to run again. I, you, you said you weren't going to run. No, I got to run again. So now he's running for re-election, okay? He runs for re-election, doesn't get the nomination. So he runs as an independent. So he's running as an independent. 1912, Teddy Roosevelt against the current president at that time, which was William Howard Taft, and Woodrow Wilson, who's one of the most despicable human beings ever. But Woodrow Wilson. So Taft, Roosevelt split the vote, right? Woodrow Wilson ends up winning. Now, why is Lindsey Graham and all of these Republicans trying to say that Trump is like Teddy Roosevelt? Here's why. A couple weeks before the election in 1912, a shooter tries to assassinate Teddy Roosevelt, shoots him in the chest. Now, Roosevelt had uh, his speech in his his breast pocket uh, of his jacket. It's like 100 pages and he folded and so it was a lot right there. And he had his glasses case. was like steel. So all of that's right here over the heart. The assassin, would-be assassin, shoots him. That catches the bullet, and it does not kill him, doesn't pierce his skin. It it's, gets lodged in his chest due to the, uh, the, the stuff that he had in his pocket. He went on to give a speech that same day. So he's nothing like Trump. Trump was under the podium and then, you know, skated off to the, to the car eventually after doing his fight, 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 you know, and that was cool, right? Okay, whatever. I, I, I'm not blaming him for being under the podium. I'm not blaming him for getting him out of there after, you know, talking for a couple of minutes. But don't compare him to Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt gave his speech. Teddy Roosevelt continued. I, I mean, <laughs> but regardless of that, here's the thing. Teddy Roosevelt was shot a couple of weeks, I think like three weeks before the election, and he still lost. So don't act like just because somebody tries to assassinate you and you survive the assassination attempt, that guarantees victory. It doesn't. Didn't happen with Teddy Roosevelt. Gerald Ford was two people tried to, to kill Gerald Ford before the election and he lost to Carter. So just because somebody survives an assassination attempt, that does not mean people are going to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to vote for this person. It doesn't mean that. It, there, there's no, it, it doesn't even make sense. You see somebody uh, survive an assassination attempt, you say, you know what? The way he dodged that bullet, I'm voting for him. No, it doesn't work like that, right? Democrats are not saying, you know what? I need to vote for Trump now because he survived it. No, it, it, that's not what it means. The people that are excited and energized 
are the same people that were already excited and energized, which is his base. He's not gaining any new votes because somebody took a shot at him, especially because a Republican MAGA supporter took a shot at Trump. Doesn't make sense. Uh, he's not getting any extra votes because of that. Uh, not at all. And history, if it tells us anything, it tells us that that does not uh, surviving an assassination attempt does not guarantee any presidential victory. Of course, you can become a member uh, on fire-tv.com slash join, get exclusive content, uh, subscribe on youtube.com slash DJ Diamond K. Uh, for booking info, hit me up, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. Do this. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back. Uh, because I got more to talk about. Welcome back. Welcome back. You bad Diamond K in here. And on the other side, we were talking about a police officer uh, who has been placed on leave. And now I want to talk about a Democratic staffer who has been fired after saying that the Trump gunman should have taken shooting lessons, right? Take some shooting lessons so you don't miss next time is uh, what she said. And uh, now those are insensitive comments, no, no doubt about that. And, uh, of course, you know, I mean... She went, she took, she took it kind of far. She took it kind of far and her boss did not agree with that at all. Now, you know, Democrats, de Democrats are going to go above and beyond. So Congressman, uh, uh, Benny Thompson fired one of his staff members after saying she wished the shooter, uh, you know, who tried to take out Trump, uh, had better aim. She wished, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And of course, we don't condone any violence, any violence. But uh, she took it way, way further than than I think she should have. And you got to deal with it. She says, I don't condone violence, but please get you some shooting lessons so you don't miss next time. Now, that was a bit much. That was a bit much. Uh, now, if she was a Republican... Of course, and Republicans said a lot of stuff about, uh, let's just talk about Nancy Pelosi's husband. They said a lot of stuff about him after he was attacked. He was in the hospital for three months. Donald Trump was on the golf course the next day. They are not the same. Nancy Pelosi's husband was in the hospital for months, and, and Republicans talked crazy about him. A whole lot of uh, staffers of folks said stuff. Uh, the the uh, politicians said stuff. Trump said stuff. No, no repercussions at all. Nancy Pelosi, after Trump's uh, Saturday debacle, she still wished him well and, and praying for him and had nice words. And, and when it happened to her husband, when he was attacked, Trump did not have the same energy. Democrats just, I don't know. I think they're like, they're, they're like, uh, and I'm going to use an old school reference here. They're, they're like Linus, uh, Lucy with the football. Like they just, every time they run, try to kick it, you pull it away, you fall on the ground. Democrats still do the same stupid stuff. The stuff that Michelle Obama said, right? And I love Michelle Obama. But, you know, the when they go low, we go high stuff. You can't do that with this crop of Republican. You can't. You got to play by the same rules that they're playing by. You got to. Now, uh, this staffer has been fired for this. Uh, it is what it is. She should have known better than that. All right. She's not in her regular life. Right. So she's, she's working, uh, on this, uh, campaign when she, when she was working on this campaign. She ain't working on there no more. Uh, and so I asked folks on social media, did they feel that she should have been fired? And, um, you know, some folks said that she should. Some folks were talking about freedom of speech. What happened to freedom of speech? And uh, a lot of different uh, thoughts on that. Very interesting there. Now, you know, the RNC is going on. And, um, you know, <laughs> millions are watching, right? But these are the Trump supporters and the Republicans. They're not getting new viewers. Not getting new viewers at all. 
Uh, but still interesting things are happening in and around the area. And so the police actually shot and killed a person near 14th and uh, Vallette Street in Milwaukee. It's about a mile, a little bit over a mile from the forum where the main uh, RNC uh, convention is happening. So there was a uh, fight. Police come on the scene. Guy has a knife. Police end up killing him. Whole bunch of uh, uh, officers from Columbus. They got officers from all around. You know, as they screwed up on Saturday, they got a heavy, heavy police presence uh, outside of this RNC convention. And they just, they killed dude. I mean, he had the knife, he, you know what I mean? Bring a knife to a gunfight. I don't know what he was thinking about. Uh, but like I said, it was some kind of fight and happened and they're trying to break it up. And it's just, you know, it's just a whole lot. And, and, and sadly, there was loss of life at the hands of the police. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I don't know what to, what to really say. Of course, uh, we've become desensitized to these type of things. Uh, and, and they lit, they lit, according to reports, they lit him up. They lit him up. I guess they were in fear for their lives. <laughs> they, they lit him up. Uh, so this person shot a mile away. So why would he have a weapon out that close to this? <laughs> you know what's going on in here. So witnesses, uh, told, uh, uh, news uh, reporters that the two men were fighting in what's called King Park. One of them pulled a knife out. Witnesses say that the men were startled when so many officers responded. I'm sure they were, right? So these officers are on edge because they've already screwed up, right? There was all, all kind of security breakdowns at the Trump rally. So you know that the coronation, this, this is the coronation. So you know they're going to have uh, to be on their uh, whole whole military thing. So witnesses said that the men were startled when so many officers responded. Witnesses say that the man with the knife was fired on by numerous officers. Now, of course, they're going to they got to try to clean it up some kind of way. So so they screwed up on Saturday. They overreacted in this instance. The officers involved in the shooting were not from the Milwaukee Police Department, but from Columbus, Ohio. Statement from the Columbus Fraternal Order of Police said that no officers were injured. Okay, so why did they light this man up that had the knife? Police from 63 departments in 24 states and Washington, D.C., along with 44 Wisconsin agencies, are in Milwaukee this week for the Republican National Convention. Wow. That many? You needed that many? So It's so unbalanced, right? They clearly didn't have enough on Saturday. They got way too many uh, here. But, I mean, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Do what, do what you got to do. do. Do whatever makes you feel good. Right? Do whatever makes you feel good. Of course, you listen to the Dom K Show on fire-tv.com. And uh, we got one more story to get into. And uh, we'll do it right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Welcome back. You and Diamond K in here, of course, the Diamond K show. And I hate to end, I hate to end things on a bad note. Uh, but, uh, this next, this next story, it, it is, it is a sad thing. It is, it is a sad thing. Uh, because when we think about what this family has been through, Kobe Bryant's father, Joe Bryant, a uh, former NBA player himself passing away. And, you know, any loss of life is, is, uh, is sad. 69 years old, uh, affectionately known as Jelly Bean because he, he loved the candy. Uh, but Hall of Famer, Kobe Bryant's father passing away. And, you know, whenever, uh, you know, whenever somebody brings up Kobe, obviously, uh, I think about that 
tragic loss. That I think about his career, obviously, and uh, the legend that he is. Well, this is his father who passed away. And like I said, his father was uh, a former player himself. His father uh, was also a former coach, also coached in the WNBA as well. And, um, you know, a, a, a really, according to uh, all counts, a respected guy, respected guy. But uh, he boasted an eight-year, his father, that is, boasted an eight-year NBA career of his own, dying today at the age of 69. And uh, his death comes just four and a half years after his son and granddaughter Gigi were tragically killed in that January 2020 helicopter crash, along with seven others. So, um yeah, it was a uh, massive stroke that uh, that took Joe Bryant today and uh, definitely want to say rest in peace uh, to Mr. Bryant. And, um, you know, like I said, he had an NBA career, Kobe Bryant's dad. So uh, RIP, a lot of uh, thoughts and well wishes uh, I saw today for uh mr jelly bean bryant uh it was i I was sad to see that i I was i was definitely sad to see that like i said any any loss of life is just uh is just sad in it in itself so um definitely uh we'll continue to follow that story and uh when we find out any um other details with regards to that we will keep you all posted of course uh, need to get in touch with me, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. Uh, I want to support the Diamond K show and on Fire TV. You can do that via paypal.me slash radio on fire. On Cash App, I'm a dollar sign, the Diamond K show. You can become a member, get exclusive content. Uh, on fire tv.com slash join. And make sure you subscribe on youtube.com slash DJ Diamond K. I'm going to uh, be back here tomorrow, 6 p.m. And uh, one other thing before we before we get out of here, I this couple, right? This 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 couple is uh, is is has been a really interesting interesting to watch, right? Remy Ma and Pat Poos. So there've been these reports: are they together? Are they not together? Uh, I think it looks like things may actually be over between Remy Ma, who is now going by her maiden name amid the alleged split from uh, husband Pat Poos. So uh, that is uh, that is interesting. You see right there, if you watch this on the screen, uh, she is on, on a song track listing with Fat Joe out of control. She lists herself, or she's listed on the, the credits uh, by her maiden name. And when we, we look at past track listings, she used Papoose's last name. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see what's going on with that. We haven't heard uh, any official reports, but uh, that is uh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I mean, you know... Everything don't last forever. <laughs> everything, everything don't last forever. All right. But uh, as always, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow. Baltimore, 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 Baltimore. August the 3rd. Have you heard? The entire city is buzzing about the citywide all-white affair. That's right. And it's going down at the hall located inside Maryland Live. Baltimore, this party is going to be late. From 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. You can eat, drink, dance, or gamble. We're going to shut the city down. This is one of the biggest and luxurious venues that you will ever want to party in. And it's not just going to be a movie. It's going to be live at Merlin Live. Tickets right now are $60 in advance and more at the door. Tables, seating 10 people are $600. Not only that, we also got a VIP ticket. The VIP ticket is $160, and that comes with 
special seating, as well as free food and two hours of top shelf open bar. Ticket locations, Eventbrite. Or you can visit MK Music Warehouse located in Scott's Curry Square Mall right across from Cinnabon. Or you can go to Silver Star Restaurant located at 801 Bona Park Avenue. Or you can call me, the legendary DJ Terry T, 443-953-1966 to get your tickets. And if you need a ride there and back, we have a party bus. That's right. Baltimore, if you need to ride, call me right now, and I'm going to set you up with the party bus. A portion of the proceeds will go back into the community to help serve the underserved community. That's right. We're talking about the homeless people and underprivileged kids and more. You got to be there.